Hey, Jim, do you think we could live full time in an RV? <laughs> Gang, it is so funny how a simple little question like that can lead to uh, the two of us now three time, three years full time in an RV. Uh, today, we want to share with you our story, kind of how we got from point A to point B, uh, some things we learned along the way, a process that we use. Uh, we're so excited you're with us. My name is Jim. And I'm Christy. And welcome to Joy Hauling, Living the RV Life with Jim and Christy Jacobus. And babe, I still to this day remember you asking that question. And I, I think it's important that people know our story. Uh, so many people are going to be coming to this podcast and we're going to be pointing them back to, hey, if you really want to hear our story, go to podcast 101. So, babe, why don't you take them, take them down this crazy this, story yeah. that came out of nowhere? And this is the very non-exciting uh, beginning. I was looking through Facebook one day and my cousin had posted a picture of the RV that we ended up purchasing and asked if anyone was interested in it. And I simply wrote back, I've always thought that would be fascinating and everything. And I said, I'm, I'm just not sure about the timing. So that started the conversation. And what really started as, as a simple question, like, I've always wanted an RV, you know, tell me more about it. It led to a couple more conversations. And then before you know it, uh, on Valentine's Day, which is our anniversary, we were in Yoakum, Texas at the home of my cousin and we're walking through this RV and Jim is asking all kinds of great questions. And I'm looking at it going, Hmm, how do you cook in an RV? What is this for? What is that for? So one simple question started the inspiration for what became our lifestyle. So uh, this, like I said, this was its very simple start, very simple beginning. Yeah, and, and gang, uh, you should know that Christy and I were big time campers prior to that, right, babe? Uh, not at all. I think <laughs> in our 36 years of marriage, before we bought the RV, so we had been camping maybe three times, and it was always bad weather or not really Miserable. a lot of yeah, it wasn't very fun. And so the thought of us living in an RV did not come out of any pre-planning or any goal setting or any inspiration other than a simple thing. Do you want to buy an RV? <laughs> <laughs> you know, it was not like a natural progression of ideas yeah. from uh, one thing to the next. Uh, that, that That's not at all what happened. And uh, like Chris said, we, we had been camping, I think, three times. And every time it was a miserable experience. And gang, I, I think it's important to know as we share with you more about our story and uh, future podcasts here, I, I was not on board with the idea. It was not interesting to me. It was like, okay, not, I, I was not necessarily on board with it at that point in time. Uh, but Christy, you know, uh, kept in touch with her, with her cousin and we were actually, baby, I think we we're supposed to go see it when we were out at a wedding in Yoakum and we didn't go and, uh, then it was actually we were going to rent a we were going to rent one and go camping for the weekend, and at that point in time, Brian reached out to us and said, "Hey, I'm going to trade this in over the weekend, and I'll sell it to you for what they're giving me as trade in." And that kind of I what prompted so. us to actually drive out there, right? On right. on Valentine's Day, our anniversary, mm -hmm. and so again, yeah. so we go out there and we look at it, and I did some research. All right, uh, one of the things we're going to talk about is getting educated about the uh, the life and everything, and so. I did some research and we went out there and we looked at it and a couple of things were obvious. One is uh, Brian had taken great care of the RV. Uh, he had bought a really uh, nice model that had a lot of uh, upgrades, even though it was a little bit older model at the time. Uh, and so it was a really, it was actually a pretty easy decision. I think we should have known we were driving out there unless there was something really wrong with it. We weren't, we were going to buy it. Um, and the, so we hooked it up. All right. We hooked it up to our F-150 only to learn later on a couple things. One is it was way too big for that truck. And babe, I don't know about you, but I remember 50 yards down the road, I was scared to death. I, I mean, I am hauling, I've hauled boats before, but nothing like this. And I'm white knuckling it all the way back home. I don't, I don't know if you were, were you nervous over there riding in the passenger seat? 
I think I was more nervous or what have we done? Oh my goodness. Yeah. What, what have we, we done? Do? Oh, was this the right decision? Was this the ultimate impulse buy? And yeah. so I think, I think in the drive home, we were, we were kind of nervously, anxiously looking forward to what this is going to be about. Yeah. And like we said early on, and we'll continue to say, there is so much to learn. There's just yeah. so much to experience and learning new things is so exciting, but it's also filled with a little bit of, uh Oh, what have we yeah. done? What so, have we done now? Yeah. <laughs> well, and, and so, um, Gang, we took it home that night. We actually had nowhere to park it. We were planning on going camping that weekend. Uh, we were going to rent one, but now we had our own. We parked it in front of the house, loaded it up the next morning, and took it to Huntsville State Park, a uh, park that we had been to, that we camped out miserably earlier <laughs> in our life together. And, um, you know, you would think the fairy tale is, is that it was a beautiful, amazing weekend. It wasn't. It was cold and rainy and damp and cloudy and the first night the electricity didn't work because the actually the, there was something wrong with the pole outside but i will tell you this we had a great time marley had a great time we had a great weekend uh, i think we camped maybe uh, like six out of the next eight weekends in a row the only weekends we missed because we already had something we couldn't get out of and long story short is we fell in love with camping in this rv and fast forward to the question we were at uh, lake livingston state park uh, here in texas we were uh, on a lakeside uh, site, which is not easy to get there, but we were there watching the sun go down over the lake, drinking a bottle of wine. And Christy said, maybe say it again for everybody. I just, I love hearing, I love hearing it come out of your mouth. Do you think we could live full time in an RV, Jim? That's not how you said it. You, you said, do you think we could live full time in one of these? <laughs> and my immediate response was, yes, we could, sweetheart. Are, are you serious? And you said, yeah. And gang, that, that's what began all of this was just Christie's one inspiration to even buy one to begin with. And then her asking the question again, we've been watching videos and things like that to learn of people that were living in them full time. So it wasn't like it was an uneducated question. But Christy said, do you think we can live in one of these? And I said, absolutely. And so we started down that road. Uh, long story short, that's February of 2019. We made the decision to go full time, babe. What do you think? Um, it had to be maybe June or July. I'm guessing. I mean, we had you had that, you asked that question, and pretty quickly after that, we were heading down the road. Mm -hmm. um, and so, gang, we want to share with you the process that we use and the process that we teach others when you're making any number of decisions. It doesn't have to be to buy an RV. It could be any number of things but it applied to our purchase of the RV and moving forward. And that is an acronym we called IDEA, I-D-E-A. And babe, since yours was the inspiration, I, I, here's my question for you. What inspired you to want to buy an RV in the first place? And then what inspired you to want to go full time? Do you remember? I, I think looking back on it, it provided an opportunity to be outside and enjoy the you know nature and in be in a in the presence of comfortable but in nature so i don't like i said i don't know that it was any long-standing dream of mine i just think i came up with it we didn't know a lot of people who were into rvs we didn't really do a lot of um things of, around uh camping and rving um, so it was just kind of a whim, but one of the things that I do remember is one day we were at home and we live in Sugarland and not that far from us is Brazos Bend State Park. And it is a beautiful state park. And I think it's like 11 miles from our home. And sometimes we would go there in the evening and we would just drive around and enjoy being outside. And there was one time when we went there and they asked us if we wanted an annual pass or did we just want for the day? And we ended up buying an annual pass, which once again um, is a great idea. Um, yeah. But it was even better for us because it was like, hmm, maybe that is the step in the right direction. So kind of getting back to what you said, I love the fact that you came up with the acronym idea because a lot of times you make uh, you 
point out that I'm the one who tends to teach and educate using acronyms. But in this case, idea was your idea and inspiration can start this process no matter what, like you said, no matter what it is you're trying to decide for these, especially for bigger life-changing, life-altering decisions. So the inspiration, I wish I could say was a, was just a, a real thought out process, but instead it was just a passion to want to be outside. Any- you know, and I, I love it when people ask me, say, how did you talk Christine into this? And I can always go her that idea in the first great. place, there absolutely her idea in the first place. And they always look at me like, really? I go, yep. hundred percent her idea in the first place, even to get the RV, the first RV to get the uh, outlook was your idea. And so I, I'm thankful for that. But, and, and gang, we're talking about inspiration here. I think about inspiration to start my business 30 something years ago, the inspiration for you to get your LPC uh, inspiration to, as you said, to go out to the to Brazos Penn State Park and hang out out there. Uh, we used to drive around gang after we knew we were going full time. And actually, I guess babe, we would drive around before we went full time and think about what sites would fit mm-hmm. the uh, outlook, you know, the outback, I'm saying uh, what would fit the outback. And we would go, Oh, that one's not big enough or that one's too slanted or whatever. Uh, I still remember driving around out there and looking at people in the tents. And if you're a tent camper, no disrespect whatsoever. But I remember going, nope, (laughs) can't Mm -hmm. do that. But we would see some really neat campers out there. We would see class A's and class C's and B's and, uh, you know, fifth wheels and stuff like that. So uh, I I think inspiration can come from a lot of different areas. And babe, I think one of the things we got to do is make sure we we listen to that inspiration because that leads to the next step. All right. And that's a lot of discussion. I mean, we really spent a lot of time talking about it. I'm thinking from the first moment you talked to Brian to the moment we actually drove to buy it had to be a couple of months. No, we had a, we had a number of discussions about it. And again, mostly negative from my point of view, but we had the conversations uh, I did go check the value on it. I did some some things. Uh, but when we have inspiration, there's a lot of discussion that needs to go on about just the idea itself. And again, I think, I'm going to say this, I think that's one of the things you and I really excel at. Uh, when we have inspiration, we really excel at the discussion part of it, the dreaming, the conversations around it. And uh, I, I I like that about our relationship. And I think one of the things we see couples struggle with sometimes is can they actually discuss things like, you know, life altering uh, things that are exciting or or even just challenging. I mean, in your clients, how hard do your clients find it to discuss, discuss things in life that are critical to them? Well, I always tell my clients, I want them to develop communication tools so they are able to discuss and be a safe person to ask for what they want, feel and need, but also listen to what the other person wants. And one of the things that you said earlier, this was a role reversal for us. I tend to be the one who's very tentative, really thinks about (laughs) things before I act. I really am slower to process. I don't act impulsively or quickly on purchases. So when this happened, I was the one who tend to go, I don't know, let's think about this and this and this. And you're more of the one to go, let's, you know, mark, set, go. And so I think that was a part of the discussion because this was so different. And to your point, what you said while ago, it wasn't a matter of months. It was a matter of weeks because he had, uh, my cousin Brian had bought a new RV. And so he was in the process of trying to get rid of this one so he could buy the new one. So this all transpired in the discussion, whether we buy it uh, was short. Now the discussion going full time was lengthier and there was a lot to consider, but it's, it's amazing how in the discussion we each went outside of our comfort zone to kind of get the information that we need uh, and which led to the education. And I think that's where you excelled is, is getting the education that we need. Yeah. And again, I think that's one of the things that I loved about it right off the bat was there again, like buying a drone to want to fly it, learning about living in an RV and about RVs in general. Uh, that was a fun part for me. I really enjoyed it. And once we started talking about going full time, uh, watching YouTube videos, uh, looking at reviews 
And gang, we had a, a very intensive, extensive process that we went through to even pick out the RV that we chose to go full time in. Babe, I'm I'm thinking we went up and down the steps of over a hundred RVs and floor plans. And uh, every time we were out and about, we would stop at a dealer and go check out what they had. Um, again, well, there's there's a whole podcast in just how we bought this RV uh, and how we came to the conclusion, which, by the way, had a little piece of inspiration in it. Uh, me dreaming about Marley sleeping out on the side porch kind of sealed the deal on that. But I think that's where I really started getting excited was the education part of it all. And uh, we would sit down and watch uh, changing lanes and keep your daydream every week. I mean, uh, we, we binge watched them. And then when they were, we'd watch them when they come out every week. And, uh, that was, to me, that's, that was the part that I really, once we kind of got to that point, uh, of doing it, you know, the learning about it and making sure it was a good choice for us was something I really enjoyed. But then babe, I still remember this. There was a day I asked you the question. I said, let me ask you a question. She, you said, what? I go, are you all in on this? And you said, what do you mean? I said, are you all in on full time? And you said, yes. And I said, good, because I'm getting ready to start acting like you are. <laughs> that just triggered a bunch of stuff. Right. And so the action part is the part of the acronym that we had to act upon. And there's, there's a lot of times where people get stuck in the um, education or the discussion and they never take it to action. And yeah. that's the scary part too, because that's where all of the stuff that you worked on and it kind of goes back to pulling that RV out of Brian's <laughs> yard and saying, okay, we're really doing this. Uh, we have to step outside of our comfort zone and make these dreams become reality. And the action part was scary, but exciting. There were so many things that needed to be done. We're going full time. We had to go from a 3000 square foot home to a 430 square foot home and all the action that needed to take place. I was still working as a nurse at the hospital. And in the midst of all this, just to throw in a little bit extra drama, <laughs> COVID yeah. hits. And COVID, because I was a nurse, I didn't feel that it was a good idea to leave in the middle of the crisis that started in March. So I was like, I'm going to just hang around for a little bit and help them through this. And because it was a SARS virus, I thought once we get to June, things will settle down a little bit and a little did I know. But taking action is probably that step in this that is the most scary, but it's actually a necessary part of the deal. And it's one that when you get to that point, you go still questioning, oh my gosh, what are we doing? Yeah. But, but also at that point where we're like, okay, we've committed to this. We're, we're ready and off we go. Yeah. Yeah. And, and again, babe, I, I think that's one of the things, again, we start mixing our marriage podcast with this podcast is that we have, we spent a lot of years developing a lot of trust in each other, uh, a lot of trust in our marriage, a lot of trust in whatever comes our way, we'll figure it out. And again, baby, you just reminded me. Um, so we go full time in June of 2020. Uh, we came down to spend some time here in South Texas at Southern Oaks RV Park, where we actually are right now. And that's a story in and of itself. Uh, and we were down here, I think I actually got sick with COVID in the process of coming down here. I mean, I think I had it when we got here and gang, I was in bed for what do you say? Three weeks, babe, pretty much three weeks with COVID. Uh, really, well. really sick, very sick. And uh, never felt the need to be hospitalized because I didn't have any respiratory problems, but running fever and aching and really uh, hit pretty hard by it. The first week we were here, the first, the first week of full time, I come down with COVID and I'm sick for three months or three weeks while we're here. Uh, but, and, and you're going to hear a lot of that from us moving forward. We just, Team Jacobus just locked horns and we got together and got it taken care of. And I finally got healthy and we hit the road and went to Maine. And even then though, we were, had to make the decision during COVID, should we try to go to Maine? And knowing that we're going through states that uh, had lockdowns going on, but I still remember our conversation, our inspiration, discussion, education, action was might as well be on the road with COVID as be sitting still. So we took off 
went to Maine and what a great choice that was because Maine was fantastic. So uh, just for clarification, though, we did not travel when you had COVID. We were no. stationary and quarantined yeah. and did all the right things during that time. Oh, yeah. uh, but when we did decide to travel, because travel does take a lot of emotional, physical, mental energy, you were already totally recovered by the time we yeah. did that. Mm. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, we would not do that. I'm married to a nurse and we do all the right things because <laughs> I'm married to a nurse. So. Uh, gang, so um, babe, I, I'm going to share my takeaways first. Uh, I'll let you do your second here, even though your name's first up there. Here's here's my takeaways. There's a picture of uh, of us with our son and our two grandsons. Part of the takeaways I have is that we live uh, a, what I would call a dream life. Uh, as we will say over and over again, you'll hear us say it in the first podcast, in this podcast, this life is not for everybody, but we love it. It has opened doors for us. It has introduced us to friends. Uh, babe, my my takeaways that I always share with people about this lifestyle that we live is, one, this is an amazing country we live in. I don't care where you go. It is amazing. It's beautiful. You could spend a month in Nebraska and never run out of incredible things to see. Uh, we've learned about um, national parks, the Mighty Five in Utah, um, the overrated or underrated, overlooked, uh, beautiful state of Arkansas that we had an incredible time in. I mean, just everywhere we've gone, this is an Ameri this is an amazing country, and it's full of amazing people. I know there's a lot of angst on TV and everything right now about you know people that don't get along, but I'm gonna tell you, most people are just like you and I, just good folks trying to make a living and figure things out. And so we've met some incredible people along the road and. Uh, to me, I'm glad we took the chance and I'm glad we did what we did because if not, we would not have seen this country. We've still got so much more to see and we've not have met all the amazing people, which you've got tons more to meet. And to me, those are my takeaways from the the willingness to step out and uh, act on the inspiration, discussion, education and action. How about you? What takeaways do you have from all this? I think one of the things that I'm I, I'm thinking about is as we get ready to set out on another journey and stuff, the importance of time, the importance oh, of doing the things that you want to do and that you dream about doing. And we oftentimes say we are lucky in that we get to live and vacation for a lifestyle where a lot of people just get to go on for short trips. So no. the adventure part of this might not appeal to everybody, but find yours find yours, plan the trip, take the time, do it. And it would be that my takeaway from all of this. Yep. Yep. Uh, you, you, I wish I'd have thought about that too. Um, we say over and over again, there's never going to be enough time. So true. And had we done this 20 years ago, I think even then we would have said there's never going to be enough time. Okay. So we've got to make the most of what we've got here. So gang, uh, one of the things we want to do every week is give you some to do's. And one of the things that we've taught many, many times is uh, about creating a bucket list. And I will put in the show notes a link to our Your Marriage Matters uh, podcast on bucket list and a downloadable tool for you. And so we want you to create a bucket list. You can have yours. Uh, they're going to have theirs. You can have yours. And then uh, we want you to create one together. So, babe, what's something you have on your bucket list right now that, that uh, you want to accomplish? One of the things that I've done and we've done is every time we have a trip planned, I will put not on there like some things I want to see on our trip. I do it in small things like when we're in Branson, Missouri, in the trip coming up, when we're in Branson, Missouri, I want to do about five or 10 things while we're there. When we're in Michigan, in the Upper Peninsula, and in Wisconsin, there are some things I want to enjoy about seeing the Great Lakes. And so my things are whenever we're planning a trip, it's not maybe big things, but it's like when we were in Maine, we said we wanted to see a moose. We wanted to pick apples. <laughs> we wanted to do certain things and experience them where we're, while we're in a certain area of the country. So my bucket list items, if you were to hear them, don't sound all that amazing. Uh, one of my bucket list items is I do want to be baptized in the Jordan River. I mean, the, I want to play golf in Scotland. So I have those kind of things. But more on the short term, I yeah. want to do things that are relevant to the trip that we're taking and not 
overlook the opportunities we're going to have in this upcoming three month trip. I want to go on a bourbon trail. I want to go in Tennessee and see the Smoky Mountains. I want to go to Dollywood. I, so, so there's a couple of things in there that are more, I can accomplish this and hopefully in the next three to six months. What do you, no. what are you thinking? Well, no, I, I think maybe that's a really good point there because, uh, and again, as we, we had the opportunity to do 10, 15, 20, 30, 40, 50 of these podcasts, uh, we'll get into some things like uh, the difference in how Christy th see things than I do. Christy's more of a micro person, more of the little detail person. I'm more of the big picture person, which is how we plan trips, by the way. Uh, we'll teach you that uh, in uh, upcoming uh, podcasts as well as how we go about planning trips. Uh, so, babe, I, I mean, you know, one of mine is I want to back up to the water in the Keys of Florida, put down our back porch on our uh, joy hauler and sit out there and just stare at the water for a month. That, and again, I, I know that doesn't sound like much to other people, but babe, you know, the water is my happy place. If I can stare at the water, like when we're at Lake Somerville, I mean, that's just, that's peaceful to me. That is uh, our place here in Aransas Pass. Now we've got a lake right behind our uh, site here and just sitting there either staring at the water or on it fishing is uh, me. So my bucket list is going to the Keys, backing up to some water in one of those nice RV parks down there and staring at it for a month. But <laughs> here's the deal. I have mine. Christy has hers. We have ours together. All right. We have several that we want to do together and we plan like that. We, uh, we look forward appropriately like that. Uh, I don't have to have the same bucket list items Christy has, but I support hers. Mm -hmm. She does not have to have the same ones I do, but she supports mine. And uh, together we have lists. We want that for you. We want you to begin to dream if you're not already to the point that you write these things down. And if it has nothing to do with camping, fine. If it has nothing to do with full time, fine. But we want you to begin dreaming and planning because, babe, I'm going to tell you this. My last thing before we get out of here, I'm going to let you say one last word, too. Sometimes the planning is equally as much fun and the anticipation of this trip we're going to take uh, leaving here in a couple of days. Maybe as much fun, if not more fun than the actual thing itself. Is that, mm -hmm. is so that fair? That is exactly what I was thinking. Sometimes there is so much anticipation and joy in the planning that can be the fun part. But I guess the other thing that kind of goes back to what I said earlier is, is the opportunity or the encouragement it, to do that uh, thing that you want to do to, to reach out and see what's necessary. What are your inspirations, uh, discussions, education, what is it going to take for you to take the, uh, on that note, uh, I would encourage everybody to live their best life and dream yep. their best dream. So gang, here's a couple of things you can do for us. One is go to our Facebook group, joy hauling, uh, with Jim and Chrissy Jacobus with team Jacobus. You can find that on Facebook. Uh, you can find uh, this and our, our blogs on uh, joyhauling.com. Uh, you can also find these on our Joy Hauling YouTube channel. If you've enjoyed the podcast, and this is just number two here, if you've enjoyed it, uh, do us a favor. Give us a uh, thumbs up. Give us a subscribe. Give us a high uh, five-star review. We'd appreciate that. And take a moment and share this with other people. Other than that, safe travels, gang. We'll catch you down the road somewhere. We'll see you later. Bye. Bye for now.